Good afternoon. Good evening. I want to talk about this um, Antarctica and um, the search for ghost particles and neutrinos which um, act as an early warning system for supernovas. And we know what um, supernovas can do. I have been talking about um, recently, hello there, bang, bang, muck bang. Recently, I have been talking about a specific star that uh, is of extreme interest to the scientific community and others. I have, and um, what we see right here. I think this also plays a role in that search because what they're looking for um, would create a like a supernova. It would provide an early warning system or something. I think they're probably looking for more than one is what I think. And I want to take you over to some of these um, Articles, whatever I've got pulled up, I'm going to take you over here. I'm going to show you this if I can. So, look at this. Physicists finally narrowed down the mass of the tiniest ghost particle in the universe. A new paper uses data about the structure of the entire universe to measure the mass of one of its smallest, hardest to study components. So, look at this right here. So, this photo shows the inside of a cylindrical anti-neutrino detector designed to detect the rare fundamental particle. You know, that looks really spacey. It really does. It looks like something out of a science fiction movie. Hello. Um, hello. Uh, thank you all for joining. I am not an expert in this. I don't even think you could call me a novice, but guess what? I feel led to share this and I'm going to share whatever is up here that I've got opened up to the best of my ability. So bear with me. Okay, bear with me because I think uh, all of this, they're looking for something other than the God particle. Also, they're looking for something. Um, so I have a lot of tabs open on this thing right here. So we are full of neutrinos all the time. Okay. Uh, in physics, they're looking for smallest particles, behaviors of whole galaxies and other gigant, giant celestial structures. Uh, they want to describe the behavior of the universe. You have to take into account the uh, properties of the tiniest components. Um, look at this. Um, so they say that um, plasma, really there's like a plasma, not just a plasma shield like around the earth but also a massive one a fluid like around the whole entire galaxy okay that's what they they really think that that is a theory uh, that they have thought about you also let me talk about this right here so um, I want to talk about let me pull this up let me let me just get back here you I'm gonna jump all over a little bit so I, I've talked about this um, astronomers predicting a nova will light up the skies in 2022. And you know, it just so happened to be, um, I've shared two videos on this so far, two videos. And I, um, here, here's some data on this right here. It's that one that they're looking for. Some of the um, Jewish people, some of the Jewish um, sects in looking for a certain star because it's going to herald the return of their messiah okay their messiah so this right here was all in the news this kic 9832227 you know when i'm watching looking at that you know that show yeah <laughs> you know that so show how it says we're moving on up to the top of that 227 comedy show or whatever that that just popped in my mind right now but it's not about that you have look at this so the, look at this prediction of a red nova outburst in kic okay so a spectacular collision of suns will create 
new star in the night sky in 2022. Star predicted to explode in 2022, a possible once in a lifetime event. Okay, and there's some people, you know, people were all over that. People were all over that. And then all of a sudden, hush, hush, when happened? Everybody got hush, hush. Everybody got hush, hush. Uh, and they didn't mention it no more. They said, ah, oh, well, it will never happen. Well, obviously, it was important enough for them to, you can see right here, it was important enough for them to, two stars will merge in 2022 and explode into a red fury. There's a big Nova event. I really still think that they're looking for this. I really do. So let's look at this, you all. In 2022, there'll be a spectacular sky show. Two stars will merge into one, pushing out excess gas into an explosion known as a red nova at a magnitude 2. It will be as bright as Polaris in the sky and just behind Sirius and Vega in the brightness. The collision in the constellation of Cygnus will be visible for up to six months. I'm, I, I can't, it seems like I can't find myself, I can't move away from this because something always draws me back here uh, and... I find stuff on it. So let's look at this. So they're, they're predicting, okay, they've never been able to predict a Nova before. So look at this. What's impressive, we've never been able to predict a Nova, Nova before, but Lawrence Molnar, a professor of astronomy and a physics at Calvin College, was able to find a pair of oddly behaving stars giving an indication of what might happen. Okay, they've never been able to predict it before, but then they've got, let me find over here, you all. Let me push this back to me so I can find this. So they've got this great big thing right here. This right here is actually um, uh, to find energetic particles from space. A new detector will soar over the Antarctic ice. Okay, look at this. It's got all these um, things on it like here. And this, this is updated back in December of 2021. Uh, rendering of what... P-U-E-O may look like when deployed. Each white dish is a radio antenna and the signals from each antenna are combined in order to pick up signals from high energy neutrinos passing through the Antarctic ice. Okay, let's, let's click. Let me click here to see a full rendering of what it will look like. See it? And it's going to beam it. It's going to beam off. I don't know how they're going to do it, but they're going to do it. Okay, that's what they're going to do. So they've got this great big thing right here. NASA gave the go-ahead for the $20 million multi-institution balloon experiment led by Chicago. Okay, they're going to build an instrument. Look at this. Build an instrument to fly above Antarctic in a balloon launching in December of 2024. Okay, I think they already have a tiny one, but they're, they're letting other people build one too. So why December of 2024? Okay. Let's, let's look at this. We are searching for the highest energy neutrinos in the universe. They are made in the most energetic and extreme places in the cosmos. And these neutrinos offer a unique glimpse into these places. Finding one or several of them will lead us to learn completely new things about the universe. So look, a 12 institution... A 12 institution international collaboration will build a radio detector attached to a high altitude balloon which will be launched by NASA and travel over Antarctica at 1, 120,000 feet searching for signals from new trinos with ultra high energy observations. Okay, the beauty of the universe. They, they're looking for these ghost particles and stuff. Of course, they, they want to study it. Trillions pass harmlessly, so that's what they're doing. So they want to, they're going to look for cosmic collisions, galaxies, black holes, and where they are created. They want to have clues. They want to look for clues and stuff like that. That's what they want. It's a beautiful way to look at the universe if you can find them. Okay, so they rarely interact. Um, so they, they get this ice sheet on the top of Antarctica. The ice cap is perfect. A homogeneous, dense, radio transparent block that spans millions of square kilometers. It's almost like we designed it. Well, what a statement that is. It's almost like they designed that big block of ice. Um, that's what she's saying. So they are unique clues about what's happening elsewhere in the universe. So... They're going to do this. They got a system called ANITA um, that NASA has had this done four times 
between 2006 and 2016 to look for similar neutrinos. So now they're going to have a much powerful, more powerful. You are, they're looking for something. They're not just satisfied with that one like Lucifer telescope or the other telescopes. They had to beef up their game. They really, they had to beef up their game because uh, they're, they are, just think of all the money, all the time, all the uh, work they're putting into looking for what's out there. They're looking for something. And I think a number of somethings uh, is what it is. I really think they're looking for a number of somethings. So this is in Antarctica. A significant, a stronger signal will be significant to leap forward. Okay, so they're looking for that. Did I say the word deaconess? No, well, I don't think I did. Oh, a cosmic, uh, a, a day, day konu. Um, so yeah, they're working with the software, all of this kind of stuff. It could learn completely new things about the universe. So they, in the next months, okay, they'll build prototypes. And then they'll finalize the design. The design is what they're going to do. They got Palestine. They'll ship it to the NASA facility in Palestine, Texas. Okay, that's what they want. They want to do that. So they're going to look for all this kind of stuff. So we got this one thing. I'm going to... I'm going to close that one out because I don't want to look at it. So why are they, why are they, um, why are they looking for neutrinos? So why are they looking for neutrinos? That is the question. Why? Why do you want to? So we come over here and um, you can see some images that I have pulled up and stuff. Um, they've got these like signals and stuff. Living on Earth, the telescope in the ice, the hunt for the ghost particle. They got telescope built way, they, they got it deep beneath the ice. Uh, and I guess it's like, that is the strangest thing. You know, if you think about it, a, a telescope deep beneath the ice, that looks really weird. The ghost particle, awesome detector. Um, look at this, a neutrino catcher may hold the key to dark matter. So they're looking for some dark matter also, you all. Uh, In-depth reporting on science and technology. And look, they got this right here. Neutrino that struck Antarctica traced to galaxy 3.7 billion light years away. Okay. Uh, they got one neutrino. One neutrino that struck Antarctica has been traced to a galaxy 3.7 billion light years away. Okay. That, that's all fine and dandy. You all, that's all interesting. Thank you for those comments. W what's going on? So let's look at this. So let me, um, let me um, get out of these images. How am I going to get out of these images? You all, I, I can get out of it. I really can get out of it. So look at this. Anti-neutrino detector. You know, this looks like bubbles. Looks like bubbles. Where would they even come up with this design to create something like that? It, it reminds me of like a place like that. You know, if you watch Christopher Reeves in one of those Superman movies, he goes to that crystal place. All these crystals. And now this has got all these bubbles. <laughs> like bubbles. We're full of neutrinos. And they got all of these bubbles. Um, uh, they took data. Let's, let's see. Uh, the Baryon Oscillation Spectroscopic Survey steered it up with other cosmological information. Um, smaller neutrino scales. So, oh, they fed it all into a supercomputer. So they got this supercomputer. That's great. They got the mass down of the universe. Let me see if I can get out of this i i want to see if i can get out of this okay I, I got out of it so but look at this so they got this buried deep beneath the antarctic don't that look like something out of a sci-fi movie if you're just tuning in just like that it's called the ice cube lab and it's illuminated in the moonlight the average temperature in winter is negative 42 degree a uh, 72 degrees fahrenheit so you know, what if they made space movies here? What if they made a lot of movies on the uh, Antarctica? And, you know, they just changed the color of it and stuff like that. Let's look at this again, you all. So they got this. They're, okay, look. So a new kind of telescope buried deep beneath the ice in Antarctica has, for the first time, seen a signal from distant, violent events. Distant, violent events. And in doing so, it's beginning to paint a picture of a part of our cosmos that has never been seen, observed before. So um, they say they can pretty much see everything, uh, every, pretty much everything we can see in the universe glows. Why does it glow? Because is, is it plasma? Is it plasma? 
Uh, they see the cores of dying stars are hidden behind shrouds of gas and dust that light cannot penetrate. Okay. And hidden, too, are the edges of black hole. Do you think that they're looking for the dark matter? Do you think that they're looking for the dark matter? Do you think they're looking for the dark, the dark um, plasma? Probably. You probably are, you also. I just want to look at this. So, you know, they got, um, they're looking for dark hole, black holes and stuff. Look at this. Um, a digital optical module sensor. A digital that's a that's a pretty big um, thing. A digital optical module sensor is being lowered into a hole in the Antarctic ice, and the ice cube detector on the continent uh, consists of 86 strings of sensors, each strung deep below the surface. Just hypothetically speaking, what if there is something beneath that surface? What if there is some kind of um, specialized equipment or something that's under there and they're tapping into that of course we'll never know the half of it. we know that there's supposed to be tunnels and bases and do they say this what if they're tapping into inner earth what if they're doing that too tapping into inner earth it's really it's really um strange if you think about all of that uh it really is the they got this going down into the earth. Um, so they have to, um, they got to figure out how to put thousands of light sensors inside of it. Thousands of light sensors inside of it. You would need, look, the team calculated you will need a cube of ice that was a kilometer in length on each side. To get it, they went to the Amundsen Scott South Pole Station, and they marked out a huge cube of ice about a mile beneath the surface, and they called it the Detector Ice Cube. Wow. An ice cube. So they, they had to drill into the ice and drop these detectors in the ice. Hey, did this just... What were they doing in that movie? Was it the day after tomorrow or something? When the scientists were in Antarctica and they were dropping these things down into there, or they were talking about the um, the global warming and stuff the day after tomorrow when they had a deep freeze, something happened and the poles flipped, and then uh, this big tidal wave came to New York and this guy's son was stuck there, and then all of a sudden a great big freeze came and it just everything went to ice. Uh, was that that movie right there? Um, the day after tomorrow, yeah, they were working uh, somewhere up there, very cold, doing an experiment. Uh, yeah, that's what it was. So look at that. So they got this place called the Ice Cube. Look, they're not still quite sure what Ice Cube is looking at. You know, I don't think we have enough pixels to see the picture. So, um, after two years, Ice Cube has caught 28 neutrinos from beyond the solar system. It's a huge milestone for those who have dreamed of a neutrino astronomy. Uh, when you see something like this, it's really heartwarming because it means not only have you learned something, but this work has not been in vain. So, this is an ice telescope. The researchers hope that the ice telescope will slowly fill in more of the pixels. An ice telescope. Well, I've never heard of an ice telescope before, but that's fine. That's uh, quite fine and dandy. So they also, when they're looking, they're looking for, um, they're looking for, look at this, these certain neutrinos because they are going to, it's an important to study. Neutrinos are very important to the study of super, ooh, I can't do that, supernovas because they provide an early warning signal. And they allow the scientists to be looking in the right direction before the supernova even takes place. Okay, neutrinos are also created in the nuclear reactions that power the cores of stars like sun. So they're looking, they want to have a supernova, and they can detect certain supernovas, uh, but they're going to hone in on certain ones in the right direction before a certain supernova takes place. So, of course, we got the, the Large Hadron Collider. Look. The Supernova Early Warning System, Nature Reviews, 
pre-supernova neutrinos could possibly could be observable uh, for progenitors within a few hours or days before the collapse, uh, which will provide an opportunity for a true early warning of a core collapse. Now, um, so say one collapse, what will happen? Could it like um, literally send like um, like a great big old plasma burst to Earth and fry everything up? Could it do that? Could it send something and do it? Could it do that? Like an EMP, like a solar flares, if, a, if you literally had a big enough one. Uh, so they want, they do, they want an early warning system is what they want. Early warning system. Look at this. Um, in 1987, light from a supernova that exploded 168,000 years ago in the large Magellanic, Magellanic cloud, a neighbor of the Milky Way, reached Earth. Astronomers Eon Shelton, they reported a supernova. So this is back in 1987. Look, Betelgeuse. Uh, Dune will join the supernova early warning system. They, why do they want a supernova early warning system? Are they looking for that planet too, that planetary system also that's coming? They, that could be another reason too. Um, but you know, they got this uh, one thing up in Antarctica and they want to have it in place by 2024. That's what we saw. Um, look at this. Um, so this, this supernova... Uh, supernova Early Warning System, SNEWS, is a network of neutrino detectors designed to give early warning to astronomers in the event of a supernova in the Milky Way, our home galaxy, or in a nearby galaxy such as the Large Magellanic Cloud or the Canis Major Dwarf Galaxy. As of November the 20th, SNEWS has not issued any supernova alerts, alerts and this is unsurprising as supernova appear to be rare. Let me click out of this you all. So um, I had this other page open right here. You can see history, um, neutrons behavior and stuff like this. This looks like something like a periodic table thing but I don't know. I'm going to click out of that too. Let me and I'm, I'm just going to tell you I'm just going to go through these really fast because um, I'm not an expert. Look at this Betelgeuse. I've heard of the Betelgeuse before. Betelgeuse, um, in late 2019, Betelgeuse, the star that forms on the left shoulder of the constellation of Orion, began to noticeably dim, promoting speculation of an imminent supernova. But if it exploded, the cosmic neighbor at mere 700 light years from Earth would be visible in the daytime for weeks. Yet 99% of the energy of the explosion would be carried not by light, but by neutrinos, ghost-like particles that rarely interact uh, with matter. So they were looking for the Betelgeuse. Okay, that's fine. Betelgeuse, that's right. So let me let me close this one out. You, I want to try to. Um, then I got into the plasma apocalypse. So I got into the plasma apocalypse. The, I think the plasma apocalypse. I thought is that something like a supernova? Would that be something like a supernova if if a plasma apocalypse would happen? So. Um, the plasma apocalypse, also known as the IMCO event, another theory is that our sun goes supernova. They have been talking about, they have been talking about the sun going supernova. They have. Um, I remember watching a video from it. I think it was like a year and a half ago from experts talking about the sun dying or something like that. Uh, a sun goes. Another theory is our sun goes supernova every once in a while, hitting the Earth and flipping its magnetic pole, flipping its magnetic pole which causes the inner core to rotate the other way. So all the upper layers slow down, stop, and start rotating the other way, causing similar cataclysmic events. So cataclysmic, cataclysmic means just like that, cataclysms, uh, bad things like you see in the movies. So you had that um, day after tomorrow. So if there was a plasma apocalypse, uh, flip that pole, uh, what would cause that? Would it be like that... Uh, Nibiru system, the planetary system that they say is out there. Would it be that? It, it could be any old thing. Look at this supernova. Upcoming release, uh, new release, supernova plasma jets, now or never, October 80 series, Stranger Things. Um, so plasma apocalypse. I don't think it's a conspiracy. I really doesn't. I don't think it's that at all. 
I think that uh, there is something going on. Look at this. Because uh, it could affect us. It really would. Why, why would they even have these theories? Look. So um, look at all this. This is, this is let, me, let me put this back to me. This is really what, um, here I'm back to this again about those stars that were mentioned of in, um, right here. They're looking. It's like, what are they looking for? They're looking for this star that's going to herald the coming of their Messiah. Uh, that's what they're trying to do. So we get over here. This was all the news back then. Look. Two stars merge in 2022, explode into a red fury. A red fury in the Polaris, uh, as bright as Polaris in the sky. Will these two stars merge into a luminous red nova in 2022? Why are they talking about a red nova? Do you think that maybe that's um, just a, a cop out? Because we know we already got like a redness, reddish, reddishness in the sky as it is, and this spray in the sky is at sunset big time this they, they already get ahead of the sun before it goes down they layer it and layer it and they got all the lines going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth um to try to cover up what's there because something's getting closer something's getting closer it seems like and they're they're working non-stop you all, i'm sorry that um i'm not looking at the comments and that's why we got moderators and thank you all so much uh really is there's really i'm supposed to be over here on this page look at this so will they merge uh brighter than a nova but not as bright as a supernova stars will emerge will merge in 2022 and explode into a red fury two stars sparking sparking red nova okay so i did have um something opened on here let me put this back to me i had something else open and that's what i wanted to um yeah this this right here let me let me get to this right here this is what I'm talking about right here. So they've got this two stars merging. And it happens to be the one that they're looking for. Like in that series, what are they looking for? Okay, in 2022, the collision, look at this, uh, in Cygnus will be visible for up to six months. They are so sure about this, you all. They're so sure about this that they had a gathering of astronomers. Okay, they did. The objects are currently contact binaries contact binary refers to two objects that are so close they are currently touching so they're currently touching okay currently touching i hope this is okay if i can do this video right here let me put this here to me um, if i can you i'm going to show you this let me try to see if i can generate as much energy in a thousandth of a second as the sun does in an entire year Astronomers using NASA's Hubble Space Telescope have traced the locations of five brief, powerful radio blasts to the spiral arms of five distant galaxies. Because these radio pulses disappear in much less than the blink of an eye. This is from space.com. Okay, this is um, where it's at, space.com. Researchers have had a hard time tracking down where they come from and what causes them. Locating the galaxies where these blasts originate is important in determining what astronomical events trigger such intense flashes of energy. The Hubble Space Telescope helped researchers narrow the list of possible FRB sources. Since their discovery, astronomers have uncovered up to 1,000 FRBs, but only about 15 are associated with particular galaxies. In this new Hubble study of FRBs, astronomers pinpointed where those bursts occurred within their specific galaxies. These images display a range of spiral arm structures, from tightly wound to more open, revealing how stars are distributed along these prominent features. These clues helped researchers rule out some of the possible stellar objects originally thought to cause these brilliant flares, including the explosive deaths of the youngest, most massive stars, which create gamma ray bursts and some type of supernova. Another unlikely source is the merger of neutron stars, the crushed cores of stars that end their lives in supernova explosions. These mergers take billions of years to occur and are usually far from the spiral arms of older galaxies that no longer form stars. This study suggests that... Okay, that's that one that I wanted to show you. That's what they were talking about in this paper. So you have these like two objects that are so close they are currently touching and the objects were discovered by Kepler. So they're talking about this, um, this star system right here. 
the merger between the two stars that will put on quite a show because both are low mass stars. I just use that as a um, just like a little thing to try to get a picture of what it is. So look at this. So they got this red nova. They're talking about a red nova. You all let me let me put this back to me. This is what I wanted to get at. So they they're all into this back then. They're all into it. So how do they know it was going to happen? Um, the way they put it, you all, I'm going to make sure I'm on the tape. A very specific prediction that can be tested and a big explosion. He and his team have an example to look at. This right here. Let me see what this is. I don't know what that is. Let me see if this V1309 Scorp Scorpi. Uh, yeah, so they got these uh, two stars that merged. They were able to look at those. Merger of a contact binary. Oh, my gosh. Uh, they expanded at only more than 300,000 miles per hour. I can't read all that stuff, you all. So they, they, they referred to that. But look at this. So they observed this right here, what they're looking for in 2018, I think. They were able to watch a light curve of this event right here unfold. There were a few booms in the sky. So they heard booms in the sky. Have you all heard about hearing the booms in the sky? This is the first time I heard that from um, something like that going supernova. If that's what they're talking about. And then a spectacular light show unfolded using pre-covery data. Astronomers were able to trace back the evolution from 2001 on, giving a big picture of the decade of progression of the event. So we have all of these scientists. We have these scientists, okay. If this star is nothing, if it's all made up, why are they having a conference? Why are they have all of these people here talking about this contact binary system. Why Why do they? Why would they even go through the trouble? Are these all these scientists, they're all wrong and nothing's going to happen? They are looking for something. They truly are looking for something, you all. And I can't seem to get past this. So look at this. They're talking about this merging star. They use the one as an example. So they find that this KIC using Kepler data data uh, it fits the light curvature of v1309 almost perfectly all radio velocity measurements seem to indicate a contact binary and by aligning the light curve to the period in time he and his team came to the conclusion that the merger would complete in 2022 you're going to tell me that all of these scientists they don't know what they're talking about None of them, none of his colleagues, nobody. This was just, this is, listen, this is, um, this is the meeting. This is a press conference at the 229th meeting of the American Astronomical Society. Okay. At the America, American Astronomical Society. It isn't doing it today. That's the smoking gun of emerging star. And they're saying, that this is going to take place. It's going to complete in 2022. We don't know if it's right or wrong, but it's the first time we can make this prediction. A, a, sec, a second magnitude. It'll be easy to see if the prediction was correct. You won't even need a telescope in 2022 to tell me if I was wrong or if I'm right. So this is, um, I really think that um, they're still searching. They're still searching and they know something's going to happen. And they're, I think um, a lot of people know things are going to happen. I really do. So we, we got all that right there, you all. And um, I'll get that off of there, Gina, honey. They're talking dead particles and stuff like this. Look, they, they can trace neutrinos back to black holes. They can. Black holes. I'm not going to show you much of this. I don't know where this all went to. But I, yeah, you all told you I was jumping all over the place. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> so they wanted to find uh, energetic particles from space. That's what they got. They got this new detector um, is what they're going to do. And they got these ghost particles. Um, so look at that. Back in 2021 to find energetic particles from space. And it will soar over the Antarctic ice. And uh, that big ice cube is going to be a telescope. That's really interesting. You have to ask yourself, why did they do? Why did they do the ice? Why? Why Antarctica? Why? Really? Why there? So this may not have made much sense. It may not have 
but there, there's something out there that they're looking for you all. They've been looking, as you can see, talking about it back in 2011. What is a neutrino and why does it matter? Why does it matter? Why? Um, yeah. It's, um, it's all very interesting. It really is. Let me hop on here, you all. I don't even know where I went with that, but that's okay. That is quite all right, you all. I really think that they're looking for something. I've already said that once. I, I really do. And um, they felt so I'm sure of it. Let me see if I can get this. Um, they, the, they, these people right here, they, they write this special Torah for their Messiah, and they're looking, they're looking for its return. This was back in... Um, 2015 is when they started writing it okay and of course you've seen this video right here they talked about him mr you know who um, but this is what they're looking for this right here they say it's a, a dull star in the constellation and then you have these uh scientists they predict a nova will light up our night skies in 2022 is uh what they think and I'm, I'm sorry I'm, I keep going back to that but it just keeps popping back up and I'm trying to get away from it I really am I'm trying to get away from it so if you um, if you see a video that has any of this on it I it's it's like in the same in a series of it they're looking for something they've got instruments they're looking for neutrinos they want to have an early a early warning um, system is what they want an early warning system that would give them a few days or something before something did go like that. Yeah, I don't think it's a, a dull star. Um, I, I'm not... I don't know about um, the coming of Christ in the age of Capricorn. I'm not one on any of that stuff, you all. I really am not. I don't study astrology or astronomy or any of that kind of stuff. But I know that the sky looks red. I know there's something out there causing it. And you all know there's something um, causing it too. And, um, and we know that our world, it's like events have been sped up. Yeah. Joseph Gregory. Um, I don't think uh, the Messiah is on the earth. But there are those who do feel that they he's on the earth. Uh, yeah. I just leave that up to other people. The return of the brown dwarf, uh, const, uh, contation, constuation, yeah, red dust, yeah, red dust, and it's not from the Sahara Desert. Uh, it is not. Um, so you all, I don't know what you might have got out of this, but I, I just shared it, is uh, what I shared. Yeah. Thank you, Bang Bang Honey. You've been on here, you and Susan B. TV. That's wonderful, you all. I hope um, it wasn't uh, too bad, but there, it's interesting to know that they have a telescope, <laughs> an ice cube telescope under Antarctica, and it does remind me of the day after tomorrow. And if they can pick up certain neutrinos, they will study the neutrinos. They'll put it through the supercomputers. they got to write code for it to, you know, be able to distinguish which ones are real uh, that they want to look at and which ones aren't. They're going to write a program for it to pinpoint it. They're looking for, I think they're looking for a specific one is really what I think they're looking for. And then once they find it, I guess, somehow they're going to pinpoint right in that direction. And they'll have a, a few days warning before like a star or something goes supernova, plasma apocalypse, something like that. The poles flip from all of that, you all. So yeah, um, I am going to go, and again, I, I, am, I am not an expert. I'm not even a novice of any of this stuff, but um, that's what I was led to share, and it doesn't make much sense to me, but I, I know they're looking for something, and they're not going to give up their search at all. And um, so thank you all for joining. Uh, thank you, moderators. And uh, with that being said, hello wherever you are in any part of the world. Hello from my heart to yours. Love you. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And uh, please give this video a thumbs up. If you haven't hit the subscribe button, hit the subscribe button. 
uh, you probably might have got unsubscribed because they told me they were going to purge um, the YouTube for spam accounts and stuff like that. So your your account might have been something like that too. Um, yeah, I tell you what, you all, this is this looks like so sci-fi. <laughs> these these like bubbles like inside of this thing right here that they use. I'm thinking, how did you even design something like that? Did you get extraterrestrial intelligence? To help you uh, did you get help from interdimensional beings and stuff like that yeah so I'm gonna go but thank you all once again and um, have a, a wonderful day